Hello, this is Mark from I'm Organic Gardening, and today I want to give you an update. It's been just two weeks from my last video, and I'll show you a picture in just a second here of how much growth has happened to these potatoes that I have growing in free cardboard boxes. They have just done amazing. But again, we've had really severe weather, lots of rain, and lots of heat, and it just brought on this growth in just two weeks. So let me show you a picture of just what it was like just two weeks ago. And today I want to show you how to hill your potatoes because regularly we started with those potatoes in the cardboard box here and we just added four inches of soil or uh, leaf mold to it and now we have to add another four inches to give us a good productive activity to get those potatoes to make more potatoes in that top soil or in that leaf mold. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another four inches to these potatoes here of that mixture and we're going to as they call hill the potatoes. So I want to go over this once again before we start hilling the potatoes. This is what I talked about in the last video and you can see here this is our beautiful Colorado potato beetle. Now here we have a male and female doing their thing and they're going to start the female will start laying eggs underneath the leaves here and they will go down below and they always kind of are attracted to the let's say the the softest tissue on the potato ahead of time and this is where it's growing here this is the new uh, foliage coming out and it's basically going right inside that area and they always seem to go there first because that's where they're gonna lay their eggs so when the eggs hatch they have very soft material or plant material for those larvae to start eating basically the plant I took the insect netting off of this and that's what I showed you in the last video. I wanted it, there was one comment I really didn't know the answer to it, is that if I plant potatoes in an area and I've never had potato beetles before, will they show up? Now this is exactly it. I've never planted potatoes in this part of the garden or any part of the garden. I usually have, I'm also a farmer and I have them out in the field. Now that's the field where the potatoes are about 700 feet away and the smell of the plant here here, attracts those Colorado potato beetles and they found it so I would always be cautious and use the insect netting ahead of time and now you can see here there's two here and also there's one over here that is just waiting for a mate and I don't I don't know if it's a male or female but then what I have to do now is check underneath all these leaves to see if there's any eggs underneath it and they're that bright orange again. So I just want to let you know that if you're growing potatoes and you live in an area that has Colorado potato beetles, they will find your plants. Here's a good example also where to look. On the surface of your material that you're having your potatoes grow in, you will also have to look there. And that's what exactly we're seeing. We're seeing the, the top of the leaf mold and soil mixed together. And basically they will sit there also too and mate and then crawl back of the plants. They do not really pretty much uh, crawl up too easily. They basically will fly as, as short distances as they can and hold on attached. But if it rains, they will get knocked down to the ground and then crawl back up the stem again. I also like to point this out too. Here's a cluster of flowers that are growing here. And a lot of people have the advice of saying, when you see flowering of the potato plants, you can harvest new potatoes. It's, it's a 50-50 chance. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. It all kind of pretty much depends on the weather. Now, when they say they're flowering, you can, again, harvest those very small early potatoes. But I prefer not to do it. I'd rather give it X amount of time. I'd rather count uh, the amount of days that that potato's been in the ground. Now, a lot of people also say too, is when the foliage dies back, that's a good time to harvest, and it is. But you should also wait at least two weeks after that foliage dies back before you harvest. And that's for the reason is like pretty much curing potatoes. Unless you're gonna take those potatoes and make it into potato salad that day, then you don't have to worry about curing or restoring them. So another little tip to see what's going on. But again, all this is doing very well. 
now it's been a total of six weeks and you can see the boxes are hanging in there very nicely we got good foliage we got colorado potato beetles growing on it and now we're going to mound the plants a little bit more again we can go up to eight inches above that original potato that we planted in the ground we did four inches in the first step and now we're going to do another say four inches on top and you want to do that within let's say uh two weeks or two to three weeks after uh, you see growth coming out of the ground here. Now this growth is just unbelievable because due to weather and usually it's a little bit shorter, but let's get into just hilling them more and getting those uh, potatoes to try to produce more two uh, potatoes up on top and trying to keep everything nice and healthy. And eventually when I'm done, I'm going to cover this all again, remove all those uh, potato beetles here and cover it with insect netting and have a great harvest ahead of me. Just a reminder, if you don't have insect knitting and can't afford it, you can always go there right now and try to find these Colorado potato beetles and basically put them in a plastic bag or throw them away or crush them and just drop them to the ground. It's your choice. But again, there is always a cheaper way to do things and to save money. Well, hilling your potatoes are very easy. You just basically push back on the foliage here, get some leaf mold or soil, and you're gonna fill it pretty much to the top of the box because it will settle again. And you're gonna keep those tubers out of the sunlight and they're gonna give it more moisture. And that's what a lot of people have problems with when they don't get a good crop of potatoes. Basically, potatoes love moisture. They love nice, let's say, rich soil or worm castings to grow in and it's all good. And you're not gonna hurt the plant by doing this. It's gonna just send out more tubers to the outside area and for them to grow. So I'm gonna go along and finish all this up. And if you want to, I'd be more than happy to sacrifice a box. If you want me to, let's say, open this box up and take a look at one of these plants here or two plants in a box to give you a better idea, let me know in the comments. Says, Please mark sacrifice a box for us because I want you to know exactly what's going on down here. And I'll do that in the next video. This way you can see exactly what I'm talking about and how these things grow because your success is my success and I'm here to help you. I'd also like to point out too, the reason for the box here that's so well is because we can hill them and we don't have to worry about soil folding away. We're making it in a confined area where those potatoes are growing and they're going to do an excellent job for you because you don't have to mound this whole area and try to keep it in place and they're easy to water. Now at this point you want to keep watering and you want to keep the area moist. You don't want to keep it wet, you want to keep it moist because basically those potatoes are filled with water and they're going to start multiplying and you want them to grow to a decent size. Now red potatoes usually grow to a smaller size because they are a, a early harvested potato. If you have other ones that are like brown potatoes or Yukon gold or other varieties they will grow and they will take longer and basically they won't uh, let's say go to harvest until maybe a couple months more from now. So we're all finished up here. We got lots of leaf mold in there with a little bit of soil. And just to keep everything nice and moist, it is going to rain for the next three days. So I want to get this video done ahead of time so you can see what's going on and start hilling up your potatoes nicely so you have a great harvest in the future. Now this should be done anywhere from two to four weeks after you get all this foliage. And basically if your foliage is not this tall already, don't worry about it. You just want to leave at least say one to two inches of foliage coming out of the top of the box and you want to hill them up again. You just have to make to let those potatoes have some green foliage so it can send some nice powerful energy into that soil and grow your potatoes. I haven't been out in the garden too much because I have a small problem on my farm and I'm going to show you a video and I don't think you would wander out in your garden if you had this animal walking around. So keep in touch. Let me know what you think of our lovely little friend that's also stalking me every time I go outside in the garden and see what's going on. I've tried to call the animal control but they're not allowed to do anything with this animal and basically it's uh, too big for me to tackle to the ground to go after so I'm basically very cautious with me and my son who's handicapped going out in the garden at this point.
Let me know what you think of this video. I Again, let me know if you want me to dig up a box and show you what's going on in that soil underneath because the basic information that you get from me is just that it's basic and I want you to have a good understanding what's going on in these boxes and what's growing so you have a better understanding what you can do in your garden or planting area and have a successful crop that's nutrient dense and is just totally delicious. Please share and like the video, give it a good thumbs up and we'll get back to you with another video shortly and hopefully everything's going good and well in your area and happy gardening.